Hello, welcome to another video by Mox Marine. Today I'm working on a Ford 351 Windsor Marine engine. And um, the this engine originally came with what's called a flat tappet camshaft. And um, the uh, that what that means is that it's not roller. And uh, if you've watched enough of my videos, I, I don't like building engines that, that are flat tappet. Um, puts a lot of uh, uh, risk to me of wiping out a cam when they're broken in. So. Um, I spoke to the customer and uh, he agreed that he wanted to upgrade it to a roller cam. So we uh, bought a comp cams roller cam. I'll put the uh, specs of that cam in the uh, description of this video in case you want to buy the same cam. But um, we, I chose the specifications of that cam to closely match the Mercruiser uh, V8 Marine cam. Because uh, we don't want it to be too wild to be uh, having sucking uh, water back into the exhaust. But um, having said that, so this block, which is a Ford 351 Windsor block, uh, came with provisions to install a uh, this, what's called the spider. It's a device that holds the roller lifters down, or the roller. There was something called dog bones, and I wish I had showed it to you before I put this intake manifold on there. But um, what I'm about to tell you is I ran into a problem, and I'm discussing it now. But um, we put the roller cam. I put the roller cam in, put the dog bones in, put the spider in. It was all. The, the, by the way, the rollers are factory Ford rollers. I'll put those in the description of this video also in case you want to upgrade your Ford Ford three fifty one Windsor to a uh, roller cam. Um, so this this video is basically going to tell you how to convert a Ford three fifty one to a roller cam. Uh, but that's not the point of this video. So, um, but it will be something you'll learn. So. Um, so I got the roller cam in, got the dog bones in, um, put the spider in, got everything tightened down, put Loctite on the spider, everything's good to go. Um, put the intake manifold on, not realizing I was, uh, causing a problem. And then I went to put the, uh, push rods in. So the push rods that came with this engine, like I said, were push rods from a flat tappet. And I'll be honest with you, I dropped the ball. I forgot to check, the, I, I forgot to order push rods when I ordered the parts for this engine. And uh, when I went to start putting push rods in it, I discovered a problem. So the push rods that came with this engine are 8.1 inches long, um, and they're so long that I couldn't even get. This is the uh, this is your uh, this is your rocker arm, your valve lifter rocker arm, or valve system rocker arm. And these these type uh, rockers are not adjustable. You tighten this center bolt down to 25 foot pounds, and that's it. There there's no adjustability in the in the valve train with these type rocker arms. Um, and this type system is called a pedestal system. And so um, when I tried to put this rocker arm in the, uh, on the, uh, this boss here with that 8.1 inch long push rod, I couldn't even start the bolt. It was, the push rod was so long, the threads of this bolt wouldn't even gauge that before the rocker was tightened up. So I couldn't even get those push rods in. So at that point, I realized I'd made a mistake. Uh, I had built the engine that had uh, unique push rods that I didn't have, so I had to go online and order them. So I went online, did some research, and... My research told me that this engine needed seven and a half inch push rods. So that's what I bought. Uh, I had the customer or the customer bought 14 of them and I was gonna buy two more. But when I got the push rods in and uh, and tried to put them in, the seven and a half was too short. So I went from too long to too short. So now I got a problem. Now I have a custom push rod situation where now I could be into a lot of money. So. Um, not really knowing what to uh, find, um, I called a place called Delta Camshaft in Washington State and asked them if they made push rods. He said yes, or custom push rods. He said yes, and I said, well, how much would a set run me? He said oh, approximately $120, which is pretty steep for push rods. So um, I told him I'd get back to him if I couldn't find a solution. So I started digging some more, and then I decided to see exactly what length push rod do I need. So that's what this video is about. So. When you try to find a custom push custom push rod, they make a device called a um, adjustable push rod. It's basically a push rod like this, but it's got a break in it somewhere right about here where my thumb's at, and the top part threads into the bottom part, and it's got a lock nut on it. So you can adjust the length. If you spin the the top part out, it'll lengthen it. If you spin it in, it'll shorten it. So you're supposed to use an adjustable length push rod to find your uh, the amount of um, preload on your on your lifter that you want. And that tells you what's like what length push rod you need. Um, problem is I didn't have an adjustable push rod, and not only that, I believe that once you get the intake manifold in, you, it's hard to use adjustable push rods because you don't have a lot of you can't even hardly get your fingers in here underneath the lifter to, to adjust the push rod in the first place. So 
I didn't think that would work, but I devised another way, and that's what I'm about to tell you. I devised another way to find out what push rod I needed. So um, this is a, like I said, I bought seven and a half inch push rods because that's what my research told me I needed to have. And they were too short. So let me show you what I did. So I'm gonna stop the camera and uh, install this, install this seven and a half inch push rod with this uh, rock arm and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, as I was saying, I've installed this, this uh, rock arm with a seven and a half inch push rod and you'll see it's too short because I've still got play and slop in my rock arm. The lifter is not preloaded and this is too loose. This will not work. However, if you notice, if I pull up in the, at the fulcrum here, if I pull up on that and then kind of wiggle and then push back down on the, on the uh, push rod, it leaves a gap between my valve stem or the top of my valve stem and the uh, uh, rocker arm. So what you do is you take a feeler gauge with it, with it tight like this, it's not tight, but just all the play taken out. Take a feeler gauge and stick it in that gap. All right. So um, I think I did that, and it came out to uh, what I did is I stacked three or four um, thickness of feeler gauge, and I measured that gap. And then I just added up the three, the uh, four feeler gauges, the, the the width of those feeler gauges, and I got a dimension. I think, and I believe it was uh, sixty-five thousandths, point zero six five. So that gap, let's see the. And yeah, it looks about 0.065. It, with my naked eye, that looks it looks like it could be 0 0.065. So here's the trick. This is the key to doing this. So with that 0 0.065 gap, I did some research and I found out that these rocker arms are what's called 1.6 ratio rocker arms. That means that it's one inch going back this way, one inch from the ful from the center fulcrum to the push rod, and 1.6 inches out to here. So what that means, if you take that 0 0.065 and divide it by 1.6, you get a dimension over here at the push rod end that you need to take up to get rid of that gap. So then your push rod will be exactly the right length to take out all the slack. So I believe that number came out to 0 0.04 something, 40,000 something. Um, I'll put it in the description, I can't remember the exact number, but it was approximately 40 something thousands. So when I added that to the seven and a half inches I already had, I came out to somewhere above, um, somewhere less than 7.6 inches. But I wanted some preload. So I wanted to have, so that I found out on the internet that the Ford uh, lifters, the Ford lifters I bought, the Ford uh, factory Ford roller lifters in this engine, have a total travel distance of point, uh, point 0.14, 140 thousandths or you know, whatever, 140 thousandths. 0.14. So typically on your preload, you want to be at least half that. What you're doing is you're pushing the, the lifter, excuse me, you're pushing the push rod down in the lifter so the lifter is compressed but not completely compressed. So you, as the system wears, you want that lifter to move out and take up the slack in your system. So I believe what I ended up with was approximately, uh, I'll put all the math in the description of this video. Sorry, I don't have it off the top of my head, but um, I ended up with about 60 thousandths, somewhere around there, preload into this lifter. So I'm gonna, um, so like I said, I took the seven and a half inches, added to it the dimension it would take to close up the gap, and then I got that dimension by taking the gap here on this end, divided by 1.6, and that gave me a number that I need to add to 7.5, and that's what it would take to get this lifter, uh, excuse me, this rocker to be, to all the lash taken out, but no preload. When you lash is when it's it's complete no plays in it, but it's not tightened up to any preload. Then I wanted a certain amount of preload, which I'd added that also into that same number. So the seven point five plus the gap, plus the preload, and that's the length push rod I need. I, I end up needing. So as it turns out, this was seven point five. What I ended up buying or we ended up needing was seven point six inch push rods, and that's what this is right here. So I ended up buying this model. This PR. It's Elgin PR-89S. I got it from Engine Parts Center in Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, that's this push rod, um, I've already tried it and put it on and it works perfectly. So I'm fixed to put this one in and I'll show you what the difference is. I'll show you how much preload I've got and the fact that all the preload, all the uh, play is out of the system. All right, as I was saying, I now have the rocker installed and I'm using a 7.6 inch long push rod. And you see there's no play in the rocker. It's, it's uh, all the lashes taken out. 
But if I do like this, if I rock this rocker back on the push rod, you'll see it dips down a little bit. See that? So I still got a little bit of a, I still got a little bit of a gap. But I mean, I've already I've got some preload into my lifter now. And I'll like I said, I'll put the calculations of what this preload is in the description of this video. But now, this this lifter is under a spring tension, and that spring is the, the spring in the lifter um, that's uh, taking up the slack. So the, now the uh, push rod is um, into the lifter and has preload, and this these 7.6 push 7.6 inch push rods are just right. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue uh, fill, uh, installing the valve train and get it done. And uh, all you do is put look, put everything in, put the push rods in, saw your lifter, tighten it down to 25 foot pounds, and you're done. There's no adjustment. The adjustability is in the length of the push rod on a on a custom engine like this. And uh, like I say. The goal of this video was to show you how you can determine what push rod length you need without using an adjustable push rod. And uh, like I say, if I'd done this properly from the start, I would have I would have had this intake manifold it wouldn't have been on. I would have used an adjustable push rod to find the, uh, the length I needed for the, and you can get the exact push um, exact preload you want. But this this method worked just fine. I wanted to add one more thing about this engine. Um, I now have half the engine, uh, half the uh, lifters, the valve train installed. And I wanted to point out that um, when you're pressing on the lifter to try to check the preload, that one's pretty good. Uh, there's two, there's two uh, requirements. One, the lifters have to be empty. They can't be pumped up with oil. Otherwise, the oil will uh, hydraulically lock the lifter and it won't spring back like that. Or it won't spring down either, so it won't have any play. Cause that's the purpose of the lifter that's that's what the lifter is supposed to do it's supposed to take out that play and make it a solid uh hydraulically locked system uh hydraulically the the play taken out hydraulically the other point i'm making is that um like you can look at this valve here or this rocker here and see this press it's actually raised up a little bit here this this valve is um or this particular um rocker is, uh, is the cam is trying to raise that or push that valve open so you won't have any play on that one there so two things, you must be on the base circle of the cam and the lifters can't be pumped up for you to have the play. So what I'm gonna do, when I get all the valves, uh, all 16 of them done, I'm gonna go back and uh, put it on top dead center number one and uh, and then go around the firing order and check to see if I got the pre proper preload on all 16 uh, lifters. And when I say follow the firing order, I've talked about this before in one of my other videos, but if you start with number one in the in the compression stroke and the firing stroke, you can check both those rocker arms because they're supposed to be closed to allow the engine to make power, to fire and make power. So if you put on number one at TDC on the on the firing stroke, check number one, which would be right uh, right here, I think. This is one. And uh, you can check the, the both of these rockers and um, they should have the, the preload that you're looking for, the springiness. Then you go to the next cylinder firing order. I don't remember what it is on this Ford, but um, I'll, I'll go check the firing order for 351, and I'll rotate the engine 90 degrees to the next cylinder and, uh, in the firing order and keep checking the two two rockers in the firing order to make sure I have the springy uh, the springiness I'm looking for in the preload. And uh, so I'll, then I'll know that I have all these lifters adjusted properly or all of the push rods are working with this engine. So I um, hope you learned something from this. And... Uh, Subscribe to my channel and uh, continue watching my videos and uh, hope this helps you uh, with your Ford 351 Marine engine. Thanks for watching.